our program and, and I realized that there were all these people following us still, you know, taking pictures and, and whatever. But, you know, we sort of got used to all these people following us and I, anyway, then later, like two days later or something, I was in a restaurant and I had to use the, the restroom and I'm in the restroom and somebody outside takes this big light and flashes it like it goes all up and down the door. Big, bright, really bright light. And I hear them laughing outside, so I think oh, it's just some kind of thing. They're trying to make me think I'm crazy or whatever. And I'm, and I'm sitting on the toilet, and who should show up but these little beings, these little dimensional comes in, and you can't really fully see this creature, but you know he's there, or she, or it, because the air is shimmering, and there's clearly a presence there, you know, it's clear, but it's just not solid like I am, and and it says in my mind, again, in the same telepathy that I don't hear, I just know what was said, it says, Timothy, we need to do some more work on you, uh, we have to finish clearing this something from you, I don't know exactly what they said, but we need to do some more, and we're going to help you, don't worry, you're going to be okay, um, and they did basically the same thing this time i was on the toilet and i watched these little things climb up underneath around me and go like in you know i moved forward a little bit and they went under the same place and cut the thing something and i felt this weird stuff squirming around in my stomach and and they were doing things and little chattering noises and whatever and i just sort of closed my eyes and was shaking a little bit like uh, again and they asked me do you feel pain does it hurt does it hurt do you feel pain no no and, the, and I asked them how do you oh, how do you get here how did you get into the bathroom I mean the little guys they crawled through the little hole in the floor where the, where the pipes were the other guy just sort of dimensionally shifted in but I was like how do you get around and, and he was like or it was like you know don't worry about that we can go anywhere we want we can move anything we want we have space we can get anywhere and i was like oh okay um and they said okay now we're done and they finished whatever they did and they said you should be better now and i thank them very much i don't remember if we said much more and they left they just went away and i'm on the and all of a sudden coming out of me is like this horrible stuff that I've never experienced a bowel movement like that before, and I was, you know, I'm flushing it away, and it's going and going, and afterwards, again, I felt so much better, I felt so more like myself, you know, like I was going to survive, because I was very sick, I was very weak, I had lost a lot of weight, um, and strangely enough, you know, we had been tortured with bugs, we had been you know, people throwing stuff at us and spraying us with stuff and all kinds of craziness. When we went home that evening, um, we found that somebody had gone into our room and somebody had done all the dishes and put away the toothbrushes and, like, cleaned the sink and, like, cleaned the floor and, like, cleaned up the house because it was kind of a mess because we were driven out in this frenzy of insanity. And somebody had come and cleaned it up um the people that we saw you know that were following us the people we saw at the lawyer's office they were there in the restaurant they were there across the street in the bar while we were doing our laundry in fact they had some guy that was in the elevator with us coming down from the lawyer's office they sent him over to put some rags in the laundry or something you know so they could set up something to hear us or whatever I mean, literally, we would be in places, and I would look up, and I would see a hole in the in the ceiling, and a camera in the ceiling, in the hole, literally, and I'm like, was that there five minutes ago? Where did that come from? You know, stuff like that. Um, I would be in the in the bathroom at Starbucks, and I would hear somebody <laughs> moving around in the ceiling, and, and, and you know. It was very strange. I walked around for days and days. Pedro was in the hospital. They kept her in there for 11 days. Uh, I could only go and visit her twice. It was as much as I could clean the stuff off me. They had me so whacked out that, you know, there was one time where, uh, you know, the whole story is, is uh, there was, 
were several times where I saw what could be considered gray aliens, you know, and I never thought I would be talking about this. They were on the roof of some buildings across from us. They were in vehicles, like in the back of the... These beings, whatever they were, whether they were real or not, accompanied a great sense of fear. I mean, really, I was very afraid of these creatures for some reason, and I did not want to meet them. Um, the other ones were... They saved my life. I was grateful. Uh, then there was yet another one, these tall ones that I saw in the hospital. Um, that was the weird thing in our program, you know, like, we're going to these doctors every day, and we're seeing these doctors, we're getting medicated, and, and all this weird stuff is happening in our lives, and we're talking to them about it, and we're telling them about it, and it's clear they know about it, and they're trying to tell us we're crazy and on drugs, and we're like, you know, we finally got past that after a week or so, like, you know, they stopped telling us that. In fact, one of the nurses said, well, we know you're not crazy, so it must really be happening. You know, like one time I'm in the office with the psychiatrist and the therapist or whatever, and I'm ranting and raving and I'm telling them all this stuff. I'm having like almost a manic episode because I'm so excited, you know, they got me so high on MK Ultra drugs and I'm explaining to them what's going on and, and I know they're involved and I can see all the molecules in the sky and, and you know, the bugs and all this crazy stuff. Anyway, they, they get a, a phone call. I mean, I wasn't crazy. The things I was talking about were pretty out there. Anyway, they get a phone call and they say, yes, okay. They leave the room. They say, excuse me. They walk out of the room and I'm standing there and this mist starts to come in over the top of the door. They had just left, and I hear it, like an aerosol spray bottle or something. And this mist comes in, and, and as soon as it comes in the room and I breathe it in, I, I'm calm now. Ah, like a tranquilizer or something. And, and they walk back in the room, and I say, thank you very much. And they say, you're welcome. And then, you know, we keep talking about this thing. It, it was, it was interesting. It was obvious that they were involved. But I had the feeling, and I could be wrong, but I had the feeling that it was the kind of involvement where some people came in and flashed a lot of official stuff and said, everybody sit down and sign this, and now you're you know, under a top secret no disclosure thing, and if you say anything to anyone, you're going to go to prison for life, and we're going to take all your money and, and execute you or whatever. You know, and they were like, there was all this excitement, and they were unsure of what was happening, and there was all this new money came into the program, and new devices, and new... But, you know, we said, the director, we were like, you know, she said, it seems like they're trying to kill you. You know, so much weird stuff. And we couldn't get an official answer from anybody. Um, I still don't understand why I was so afraid to talk to these people. It was like, these people are spraying me in the head everywhere I go with this stuff from a little black canister. And I don't have the wherewithal to, like, whip around and grab it out of their hand and kick them in the balls or something, you know? I'm, like, so out there on this stuff. They can drug you, and you don't even know you're drugged. And, and this went on for years. I mean, literally, we realized that, that this was going on for years. The other thing that we realized is that we were being televised. Our show, we called it the Tim and Petra show. We had people gather every night to watch us. There was a bar across the street and they would be out there, they would be cheering, they would be cheering, they would be, you know, is he looking? Is he looking out the window? Or what is he doing now? What is she doing? You know, and they would be cheering, they would be have sex, they would be, uh, you know, they were trying to get me to kill her. They were trying to get me to kill myself. They were gang stalkers who would bump into us everywhere we went. You know, it, was, it was just so many things we went through. Um, I, I, I'm still left trying to figure it out. Um, they're still 